Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the construction of a parametric off-axis aspheric mirror telescope. To start with the design we will start with the primary mirror and for that we just add a surface. We set the identifier to primary. The next step is we will assign a parabolic form to it and we will put the quadratic term to 0 0.01 and we want the aperture to be rectangular and therefore we add a rectangular aperture. Now we want the model to be parametric so we also want to parametrically define the aperture and therefore we go here and open the multi-config uh, lookup table as you can see it now appeared here. We'll just place it beside the um, system setup view and now we can define our parameters. So the first parameter will be the primary aperture in x direction and we'll set this value to 45. Now we can use this value to define the aperture in x direction. As you can see here, the aperture has been applied to the surface. The next step is to define the aperture in y direction and this one will be a math equation because we want it to be the aperture in x direction minus a small margin. We will call it aperture y and the value is aperture x minus the margin. So we haven't defined the margin yet. This can be done by adding another parameter. We'll call it margin and this one will be 10 millimeters. Now again we copy the value of the margin and place it over here. Since we want to have an off-axis telescope we'll add another um, parameter which will be the decentering of the aperture and this one will be the center y and it's the, um, the center plus the margin. And again we can apply the decenter to the surface. Now I made a mistake in the beginning. The surface curves into the wrong direction but we can quickly change this here by adding a minus there. So the next step is to set up the sequence and therefore first we need an object surface where the light propagates from. To add the surface we just add a new surface, we move it before the um, primary surface and now we check that the um, primary surface is placed here in absolute coordinate space and therefore we can move the first surface 200 millimeters to the left. Now we do not want the object to be at minus 200 but we want the rays to come from infinity therefore we go to our sequence to the source setup and we define the source to be a plane wavefront from infinity. Also we want the aperture to be taken from the primary mirror and we want the um, sampling of the aperture to be a grid. So this can all be set up here in the sequence. Since we do not need the first surface we'll just hide it so it's not visible in the 3D view. Now the next step is to set up the um, secondary surface Therefore, again, we add another surface. We'll move that one to minus 100 millimeters and minus 200. And now to make the mirrors bounce off in reflection from this first surface, we need to either add a mirror coating to the surface. The other option would be to convert the sequence to a user sequence and then define the uh, order of the surfaces 
for the rays to be traced. The secondary mirror also will get a rectangular aperture and also this one will be parametric. We'll add two additional parameters for the aperture in X and Y and we again just copy them or you can also just type the parameter name and we'll make the aperture in X 15 millimeters and 10 in Y. As you can see now, we also need to decenter the aperture. And for this, we just decenter it by one aperture half size, which is um, this parameter over here. Now we can take a look at the 3D view and as we can see here the ray that is coming from the entrance is a bit vignetted from the uh, secondary mirror. Therefore we will increase the margin a bit. And to be able to get a better sampling here until the border will increase the um, sampling of the aperture to a bit more rays. Now we've set up the apertures for the primary and the secondary mirror and now we want to optimize the form of the secondary mirror to form an image over here where we will add an image plane. So first we add the image plane. We will position it in absolute coordinate space at a position of 20 millimeters behind the um, primary mirror and for our sequence to trace correctly again for the secondary mirror we add a coating which will be a ideal mirror coating. Also we'll name the secondary mirror and also the image surface. Now we add a, a spheric form to the secondary mirror in this case I will use a QCon aspheric surface and we set the radius as a variable. We allow three polynomial orders and we will make them all as variables. The norm radius for this A sphere will be 10 millimeters which is in the range of the aperture. The next thing to do is to set up the merit function. In this case we will just use a default merit function where we will optimize the uh, spot radius without any constraints. Now over here we can see um, the merit function has been created and we have here our variables which is the curvature as well as the um, polynomial terms of the A-sphere and the optimization goal is the spot radius. Now. In the optimization tab we just click on the local optimizer and then we let it run and after a short time we directly get um, the optimized um, surface form. Now we can see here the aperture of the um, secondary mirror is a bit too large which we can quickly fix by changing the aperture size here to 8 millimeters in this case. The next thing that we can do now is to analyze the performance of the telescope. Now what we can do in the analysis tab is we can um, look at the spot diagram where we can see this, that the system is diffraction limited and also the point spread function is already looking good. Now the next thing that we can do is we can add some fields to our sequence. Therefore we go here to the um, source settings to the fields. We add two more fields and we can enter the uh, field values for these fields. We can now also analyze the uh, point spread function for these different fields. And we can see that for the third field, the point spread function is getting a bit larger, but for the other one, it's pretty close to the 
ideal case. Okay, and now we already have our um, design for the telescope. So the first thing that I want to do now is we have these surfaces here, but we want to make them like a volumetric elements so we can export the whole thing to a cut model. Um, for this, we go to the construction tab and we add a new custom element here. We set the positioning to absolute and we place it before the um, primary mirror. Now we just drag and drop the primary mirror into the element. And the material here does not matter, but we will just add uh, um, some default material to it. The same can be done for the secondary mirror. Again, we drag and drop it in between here to this position. Now we will position it at minus 200 and put the surface in there. And again, we will just choose a dummy material so we do not get the error about the missing material. Now that we have um, set up the elements, we will use our sequence and convert it to a user-defined sequence. And this will define the surface list to be traced. And now if we add the additional dummy surfaces, th these won't be um, inside that surface list. To add the dummy surfaces, we will just go to the surface, we will duplicate it, and then we will remove the coating and the form and we will move it into C 10 millimeters. And as we can see now, we directly get this volumetric element here that can be exported to cut later. The same can be done for the secondary mirror. So again, we duplicate the surface. We do not need the A sphere and the coating here and this one will be moved in C direction. Now I will reduce the ray grid a bit so we can better see the elements. Okay, so now since this is a parametric model we can easily change some parameters and the first thing we can change, for example, is the aperture of this primary mirror. Therefore, we just go here. We change the aperture to, let's say, 65. And you directly see the impact on the point spread function as well, the rays being traced to the new design. What we also can see here is that some rays get vignetted here. So we need to change this a bit. Um, just increase the size here so we'll make it to 20 and 15 and now we can see the mirror substrate is a bit too thin so we'll increase the thickness of the element here okay so this was my tutorial on the construction of this parametric design i hope you enjoyed and see you next time